Hello everyone and welcome to another Pixel Game Maker tutorial. Today we're going to go over localization, we're going to go over how to set it up in your project, how to use it in your project, and then at the end we're going to go over some extras on how you can actually detect what language is being used in your project so that your actions can react according to the language that is being ran. And so with that said, let's get started. Alright, so you can see that I have a simple title screen here. I'm using the show text runtime action to display the text. And so we want to change this from English to be able to adapt to a couple other languages. So the first thing let's go over is how to set up multi-language localization support. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the settings and project settings. And when we scroll down all the way to the bottom, and here we can see the language setting. Now my main language is defaulted to English, but you can see that we actually have a list of languages here that we can localize to within this editor. Now before I add some, I want to show you how the text resources look right now with just the English uh, setting. So this is the show text that you see on the title screen and it's got the start, continue, options, credits, etc. And you can see that right now we only have one tab and it says English. So let's go back to the uh, project settings here and I'm going to add two languages. I'll just do French and I will do Spanish. Now you can see now that I have selected French and Spanish, I can now actually click off English and I only have these main languages to choose from. So I am going to add English there and I'll just leave it as the main language for now and I'm going to hit OK. And now you can see that it added the two tabs, the French tab and the Spanish tab. And now we can start to localize these languages. So let's just say in the French tab here, we can actually just delete the text and then we can click over on English and we still have the English uh, version of the text. We click over to Spanish and it's going to auto populate if you add a language after the text resource has been created, it's going to auto populate the English version of that text. Now what's dangerous is actually leaving it blank like it is in this French tab currently because when it loads and say the computer user is is the main language is French on their PC, it's going to auto detect that and assign French as the main language and then they're just going to have a bunch of blank text. Nothing's going to show up. So at least put something in there even if it's uh, whatever you can't translate it correctly just throw in the English of it and you're gonna at, they'll at least have something to work on. Alright so now let's start to localize our text. Let's get some French and some Spanish localization here. So I'm just gonna go to Google Translate. I don't recommend this in a real project. I've heard that it doesn't translate uh, particularly well especially with languages like Japanese and Chinese. So I'm just going to translate from English. I put in my text and then I'm, I pick the French language and I'm just going to copy it. I'm going to go back to PGM, go to the French tab and paste it in there. So now we have the French localization for this text resource. Now we can come to the Spanish and I'll click this and there's Spanish and there we go. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste that in there. And I'll just capitalize that C. I don't know if it needs to be or not, but I'll just do it. So now the setup is complete. We went to the project settings, we added the languages, and now we came into our text resources and we added the actual localization pieces to them. So now let's go and test these languages out, see how they work in the game. So when we play test, we're going to notice that everything is in English still. That's just the main language that we set. So one of the th options that we have is we can go to project settings and we can come down here and say main language and let's just say French. We'll hit OK and then we'll hit play test again. And we'll see that it loaded it up in French. Now another way that we can change the language is we can go to settings, we can go to game screen and we can go to the language settings and in this particular case we can click Spanish and hit OK. And now when I reset the playtest using F5, you can see that now it resets to be the Spanish version of the text. And so this is how you can playtest your game. Now do note that the text will actually load, and I might have said this earlier, it will load the language correctly based on what the computer user is using for their main language of their PC. So we don't have to worry about it 
going to the Spanish language for a Spanish user because it's going to detect the PC, use the Spanish as the main language, and it's going to automatically apply that language. So this is just for testing purposes, say, you know, your main language is English, like in my case, but I want to test to make sure that these work, I can just go and change them accordingly. I can change back to French, hit OK, F5, and it will go to the French version. Now these settings will not retain once the playtest is closed. If I closed it, you'll see that, well, I guess I was in French on this main setting anyway. So if I go back in here and I go to say English, hit OK, restart, go to project settings, you can see that my main language is still selected French. So that doesn't reset any of these settings. All right, so now that we know how to set up and use and test localization in our projects, let's look at the extra that PGM gives us in order to be more adaptive with the languages. So I'm going to close the project settings because now we're going to go to the plugins tab. We're going to right click, add an official plugin, and down here we have a plugin called get the display language. We're going to hit OK. And you can see that this will simply, if we go to the help file, it says get the display language and store it as a variable. And then it goes on to say the definitions. So a value of zero will be English, one will be French, two, Dutch, three, or Spanish, and etc. It goes through the list. So now what we can do is get a variable and it will auto detect the language. And we can see this. If we go to resources here, we're going to need to add a variable for this. So I'm going to say display language. And now in our objects under the setup action here, we can add a runtime action. And if we go to the plugins tab, we can see that we have a new runtime action called get the display language. And so we're going to select what area the variable is in, which in our case is the common. And then we're going to select the actual variable. And that's the variable that is going to contain the language value. And then we're going to hit OK. And now we can play test. And now we can F1, go to debug, common variables. And I can scroll all the way down, if I can grab it, to the bottom here. And we have the display language. So the display language is 0. And that is because we're using English. And that's what the value was for English is 0. So now if we go to the game screen, we change it to French and hit OK. Now when I refresh this, pay attention to this variable value if you can see it. You can see that now it refreshed to 1 because now we're using French, which was the value of 1. And then if we go and use Spanish, I believe this was supposed to be 4, was it? 3. Oh, that's right, because it skipped 1. Dutch, then Spanish. That's right. So yeah, it went to the value of 3. So now with this, we can actually do certain things depending on what the value of the language is. So for instance, say that you didn't have text, say you weren't using text resource, say that you were using an image, sort of like this spell blaster image right here. You could actually make an image for English, you can make an image for French and an image for Spanish in my case. And then what you could do is have a setup action here, let's go see an example of that. So if I was to create an object, and let's just say the title logo, and just real quickly, we had a starting action of setup, and then we had an action called English logo. You know, it's bad when I'm wondering if I spell English right. French logo. Spanish logo. Now, these images would be the corresponding images to show. And then what we would do is we could add a link and we could say that our condition is if the common display language equals zero, then we're going to display the English logo. Otherwise, if it's equal to one, we would display the French logo. And lastly, if it was equal to three, then we would display the Spanish logo. 
So you can actually still use images. You don't have to use text resources and still get the localization that you might need for your project. And so that is the extra that PGM offers. That's really cool. And one thing to note before we end here is that you do want to make sure that you are running that check. So in this setup here, you would want to get the display language and put it in the display language before you actually ran that. You'd probably do it in a one-time runtime action as well. But I just wanted to make sure to point that out real quick. So yeah, that is all there is to setting up localization, to using it, testing with it, and then to also not necessarily use it for text, but to also use it for image resources or for any kind of gameplay. And so I hope this video helped. Any questions, you can go to the Steam forums, into the Discord, or comments below. We'll get you all figured out. And with that, we'll see you at the next video. Thank you.